Hey, Retro Community, how's everyone doing? I hope you all survived 2020. It was a hell of a year, and hoping this year will be much, much, much better. But we're going to get to December's pickups right now. First thing I'm going to show off is a delivery from eBay that I got. Cube-sized box. No idea what it is. It could be a couple of different things, so let's find out together. So I'm pretty sure I know what this is. Let's dig a little further. And what we have here is a collection of test harnesses for a Commodore 64. I don't believe they are complete. Some may be, some might not be. I have to actually go through, because I know I've seen some of these test harnesses and they have wiring, although if I look at this one, it's got resistors in place, so this, these may be ready to go. And it's a uh, another Commodore diagnostic cartridge. Not sure if this is a dead test or if it's an actual diagnostic cartridge, but I guess we will find out. Let's go on to the next item. And the next item I got from a local shop, kind of like an antique store, but they also have retro gaming stuff there as well, retro electronics. It's all just in a bag here, so I'm just going to take it out. And it's just basically a bunch of gaming books, mostly Atari 2600 for various games. I don't have all of these games, but I know I've got most of them. Definitely don't have that one, but still nice to have. Not everyone cares about manuals and things like that, but I kind of think that they're neat to have. So I'm not going to go through them here. I will probably do a little separate video on these. I know I kind of did a small one last year, but I'll maybe do an update to include all of these new ones. I know I've got some non-Atari stuff in here somewhere. Now I've got the owner's manual for the uh, Heavy Sixer, so that's neat. And uh, maybe I didn't pick it up after all. I thought maybe I did, but there was a Super Nintendo manual in there, but I guess I didn't grab it, so no big deal. Uh, that's what this is here, though. Let's go on to the next item. And the next item we have is not a pumpkin. I can promise you that, although nowadays you never know. So let's open this up and see what's inside. Oh no, the scourge of every unboxing, packing peanuts. No. Well, we'll have to clean these up too and dig down deeper. Okay, so people might wonder why are packing peanuts, you know, so undesirable? Well, one, they're annoying. They get everywhere. You, you open something, you open up a box, you pull things out, and the peanuts always just flow out like water. But the more important reason is that these things are very prone to static electricity and they will stick to just about anything now if you're packing it with glass or something like that not a big deal but if you're packing it with electronics well there's always a slight risk of static electric discharge shorting shortening shorting something out so but i think i got enough out that we can get to the first item and that is a game gear which if you can see it looks like the screen is already delaminating over here that's unfortunate however it does have both battery covers, which is very rare, and I did not even see that in the pictures. Plus, it came with a copy of Sonic 2, my first Game Gear game for the collection. So, what we'll do is we'll finish the unboxing. There's some more stuff in there. We'll part on real quick to see how bad it actually is and see what we need to do, and we'll go from there. Also in this box is something wrapped up. Well, not quite, but it's an OG... Game Boy, and this is supposed to have uh, screen issues as well, but if it's what I'm thinking, it might not be that big of a deal. It might be an easy repair, but we'll uh, fire it up and see. Anyway, it looks like the screen lens is a little cracked, kind of odd, but I don't think I've ever seen one cracked like that unless this was replaced with a glass one. We'll, uh, we'll find out. But this also came with a copy of Tetris. So, another Game Boy game to add in my collection. And it also has a battery cover. Two for two on that one. Let's uh, go ahead and clean up the table a little bit and see if we can't get these fired up and at least see how bad uh, they are. So we're going to start first with the Game Gear. Because I'm really curious to see how bad it is. But, oh, and I can already see one issue here. Battery contacts have uh, rusted a little. Hopefully I get enough contact with the battery just to see if it works or not. Let's uh, 
that'll be something we have to address in the future, but let's power it on and see what happens. No power at all. Again, we need to check the, probably the battery terminals or not. Like I said, they'd look like they might not be making contact. So let me uh, see if I can get something to clean it off a little bit. Maybe some sandpaper just, just to get something. Well, that didn't seem to help any, but that's fine because it did say that it didn't power on properly in the description. And it's one of the reasons why I bought it is because I wanted to refurbish it. The shell overall is in okay shape it's got some scuffs and scratches and stuff like that as well as on the back but uh obviously the power issue will have to be addressed more than likely what it is is the capacitors have probably blown maybe even leaked hopefully they're not too uh too far gone that they uh destroyed any of the circuitry any traces or anything but recapping it should not be too big of a deal and replacing the screen if it really truly is in bad shape and it's not just the lamination that may or may not be able to be fixed you can buy replacement screens so not a big deal so we'll set that to the side and we'll try the Game Boy next Game Boy does not power on either. So we will definitely have to check. It's also possible maybe these batteries are dead. They're new, so they shouldn't be, but who knows? I know these two work. You know, you need four, but... Oh, there we go. It's possible the batteries just don't work. The screen itself seems to be in okay shape. It's just the lens, so... Of course, the game doesn't boot. And the reason the game isn't booting is because if you look very closely at the N, it's slightly distorted. And if the Nintendo logo does not properly show up on the Game Boy, or a Game Boy Color, or a Game Boy Advance, the system will not continue to boot. So, it could be dirty contacts. Let's uh, give it a cleaning and see. Okay, let's try again. That's better. Start button's a little sticky. A and B seem to work up, down. Well, down, left, and right seem to work. I don't know about up. So this is working. I just need a new lens on here and a definite cleaning. Probably have to tear it open and see if there's any liquid damage inside just in case. The other neat thing is it's got the extension port cover on there too. This is almost always missing as well on the original Game Boy, so I think I might have lucked out a little. We'll see. There are screen mods for this one to give the original screen a backlight, as well as replacing it with a new IPS screen which has a backlight as well. New shells and things like that. So we'll see what we can do with this one. Maybe I'll just try to get a new screen lens and leave it as is to keep it as original as possible and get another Game Boy to mod, or we'll mod this one. We'll see. Let's go back to the Game Gear, though, since these batteries here may or may not be working, and try one more time before I call it quits on it and have to refurbish it. And it's still nothing, so it's, it's possible that it, this really is just dead. And that's fine. Like I said, I wanted to buy it to refurbish it anyway, so... That's that. Let's move on to the next item. And the next item to show off, I didn't think was going to make it in time, but it did eventually get here. A little delay due to the holiday and shipping delays from other things. So it's just a simple package from eBay. Let's open it up and see what's inside. And it's just what I thought. Two Game Boy games, but the reproductions of Super Mario Land and Super Mario Land 2. And if you notice, on the Super Mario Land here, it says color. And on Super Mario Land 2, it says only for Game Boy Color. Now, 
the other thing you may notice is that these are blue colored cartridges and not standard gray ones. These are reproduction carts again. And the color part is because they also include a ROM hack that colorizes these games. I'm going to go into more detail about these games in the future. Not sure why there's a battery in there. I don't believe you can save unless the ROM hack adds save capabilities. I don't remember. But I'll go over these uh, both in a future video. Uh, I know I said no more like multi carts or anything like that, but these are not multi carts. They're standard games, just enhanced. So this one does have a battery because it does need one. It's possible that this one has a battery because these are just generic carts or whatever. But we'll go over these, we'll go over my opinions on them because I have some strong opinions on these. Not the fact that they're repro carts, but other reasons, but we'll go into those. All right, well, that's it for this. We're going to go into the next item. And the next item we have for December is not from Amazon. It was just shipped in this box. It's actually an eBay purchase. And it's something that was delayed for a bit due to holiday issues with shipping and other things going on in the world. So let's open it up and see what's in here. And what we have is a copy of Mega Man 3 for the NES. My favorite Mega Man game ever. I feel like this was probably one of the best ones out there in terms of the classic Mega Mans, and maybe even overall. I feel that this game is where they finally got the formula right. They got the engine right, the controls, level design, boss design, music, everything. This was just a great game. I know a lot of people have high praise for Mega Man 2, and that did definitely start the direction that Capcom went in for the Mega Man series, but this was it for me. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up, and we'll test it out real quick to make sure it works. And... Then we'll move on to the next item. That's right, everyone. It's time for my patented janky setup. I don't know if I remember any passwords. I'm trying to remember. There was one. Maybe it goes here. There we go. And it still does the little glitchiness right over here. I do remember that originally. Although it's possible the cartridge contacts need to be cleaned off as well too. We'll see, but I'm pretty sure I remember that. There we go, nine energy tanks, that password worked, so. Game seems to work otherwise. Let me go ahead and clean the contacts off just to see if that glitch goes away or not. Like I said, I do remember there being something like that in the original game, but this is also a clone console, so let's take a look, cleaning it and see if it comes back or not. It wasn't too dirty, but let's see. No, it's still there. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's normal. I'll have to go back and see some other footage from other sources, possibly test this out on the original NES just to see, but this game works, so awesome. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next item now. And the next item is this giant box here that I'm going to unbox on the floor because obviously it's not even in the frame. And if I back the camera up a bit, it's a relatively large box. Pretty sure I know what's in here, at least it better be what I think is in here, because otherwise I'm going to be really upset. But let me go ahead and get this opened up, and we'll take a look together. So already off the bat, I've got a few smaller items to pull out of the uh, packaging, and as soon as you see these, you may know what these are for, but kind of hoping you don't, because it'll ruin the surprise a little bit. But there's these things, which are pretty hefty. And what else we got in here? Lots of packaging. There's uh, another, and uh, there's another set of these here. Next, we'll take a look at this. 
And what we have in this gigantic anti-static bag, this bad boy here, it's a CGA card. And it's funny how video cards from this era were this large, they got smaller, and then now they're practically that size again. Although infinitely many times more powerful. What else we got in here? All right, we need to make some room. That's right, I bought a gigantic bundle of bubble wrap. That's all I've got, guys. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and finish unwrapping this and show you guys really what I got. And I'm going to finish unwrapping it on camera. This legit took me about five minutes to unwrap all the bubble wrap. There is a ton of it, which I'm happy about because that means this was really packaged well and it means that the person that packaged this cares about this, so... We have an IBM 5150, though it doesn't say it. It is a uh, PCXT. Again, this is listed as a 5150. Might be a different model, but more than likely it's a 5150 based on some of the photos that were taken. Does have a hard drive. So if this is a 5150, that means it's got the third revision BIOS, which is good because that means it'll be able to do a lot more than what I was able to do when those first released. So no floppy drives, unfortunately. That's, you know, the bummer there, but I'm probably gonna use a GoTech anyway. Although I still wanna try to source a working floppy drive for this. Let me turn it around so we can see the back and then we'll try to open this guy up for a quick teardown and we'll have a future video on it at some point. Now, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about these. I've done some research over the past year or so. Oh yeah, here we go, IBM 5150, perfect. So there's the confirmation of it. Uh, obviously, you've got your power supply input. You've got an output to a monitor, exhaust fan, keyboard, cassette port, which don't have a keyboard for this either. That's going to be another interesting thing to locate. 99% sure that's for either an external floppy drive or external hard drive. I have to do a little bit more research. There's obviously no additional I.O. cards on here serial port, parallel port, anything like that. But I do have the video card. Don't have a CGA monitor, but I can get around that too. So let's go ahead and get this guy opened up. It looks like uh, most of the screws are uh, already removed for us. So I will go ahead and take the rest of these two screws out and get inside. Let me go ahead and uh, get a different angle over here. So it looks like we actually do have the floppy drive controller here so that's for an external floppy drive and we've got the hard disk controller here for this big ass i'm guessing a seagate drive based on the model number st251 and the old school seagate logo power supply i think yep 63 and a half watts fancy fancy high-tech power supply you know compared to heck even the 300 watt power supply that's in your standard consumer pc nowadays that's nothing but it was enough at the time, that's for sure. Of course, we'll you know put the graphics card in and I'm gonna have to see if I can find an IO card for serial port access, parallel port access. Uh, looking at the motherboard, if you see over here, it's the uh, 64 kilobyte to 256 kilobyte CPU version. So this is a later revision motherboard in general, which is awesome. Over down here, I don't know if I'll be able to catch it on camera or not, but right there is the 8088 CPU, which is a subset of the 8086 CPU. It's an 8-bit CPU, uh, runs at 4 point something megahertz. Uh, not a whole lot of upgrade options, but you can upgrade it uh, using an NEC V20 CPU, which is an 8088 clone that also has a subset of the 186 instruction set. So it's still an 8-bit CPU, but because of that new instruction set, it runs a lot more efficiently, so you get a little bit more performance out of it. Intel did release an upgrade card uh, that allowed you to upgrade it to a 386, and then using that card, because it has a socketed CPU, you could theoretically upgrade to a 486 using an overdrive-type processor, or even a 5x86, upgrade, which is basically just a 486 with some additional instruction sets to help it compete a little bit more with the Pentium line of computers. It requires some modding and things like that, of course, but it's got a couple of the original screws for the expansion cards. 
not the rest though and it obviously didn't have the original screws for the casing itself but overall this is pretty clean even the fan here is really clean so whoever had this took care of it i don't know if they bought this to try and fix it or use it for spare parts or if they own this themselves no idea so it'll be very fun very interesting to try to refurbish this get it working at the very least i have a basic amount to get it to boot to post at least if the hard drive works it may actually boot if there's an operating system on there if not then i'll have to figure out how to get a floppy drive and get this thing going by default it will not support anything more than 720 kilobyte discs might even be just uh, 360k discs but if i get a GoTech with the flash floppy firmware on there shouldn't be an issue i can use that kind of an image so there's the ibm 5150 mini teardown as part of the pickups video and well, that's it for December 2020 and 2020 as a whole. What did you guys think? Personally, I'm really excited for that IBM 5150. I have a lot of ideas planned for it, including getting an XT to IDE card, which would allow me to use an IDE hard drive or even better yet, an IDE to CF adapter so that way I can have a CF card in there with no moving parts. Plus that will allow me to load an operating system onto it from another machine. Now I still plan on getting a floppy disk drive for this as well as a GoTech, but at the very least, it'll get me started in the event that the MFM hard drive it came with isn't working. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe. Though there's no obligation, I do appreciate it though. And if you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down. And as usual, leave a comment below as to why so I can use that to improve things going forward. Thanks all, and I'll catch you later.